In this video, I'm going to take you through 16 of the best low carb vegetables. All the vegetables in this video are so low in carbohydrate that you can pretty much eat as much as you want, even on the most restrictive of low carb diets, such as the ketogenic diet. <laughs> Hey Carb Dodgers, my name is Dr. Dan Mags. If you're new to my channel, then welcome. It's all about losing weight and keeping it off in a healthy way. We talk about low carb diets, fasting, exercise, and all that good stuff. If that sounds like something you'd be into, then I'd love it if you'd subscribe to my channel, which you can do by clicking the subscribe button. And if you click that little bell next to it, YouTube will notify you whenever I release a new video every Tuesday. Now, all the vegetables in this video contain less than five grams of net carbs per 100 grams of food. And net carbs are the digestible bit that our bodies actually can use for energy. It's a really low amount of carbs, which means you'll more than likely be full before you start to overeat these foods. And as you probably noticed, I'm British. Which means we call some of our vegetables by different names from pretty much most of the rest of the world. I'll try and use the common international names for these things, but hopefully it should be obvious from the pictures what I'm talking about. Which brings me neatly on to number one. We call them courgettes, you might call them zucchini. This member of the squash family is particularly low in carbohydrates and is really versatile. Compare it to other members of the squash family, such as pumpkins, which have 6.5 grams of net carbs, and butternut squash, which has 10. Whereas courgettes have just 2.1 net carbs per 100 grams. You can roast them, fry them, grill them, but they're perhaps most famous in the low carb world as an alternative to pasta. You can use a spiralizer to turn courgettes into spaghetti, which we call courgette, but I guess if you call courgette zucchini, I guess zoodles works just as well. You can try this courgette bolognese recipe, or if you're feeling a bit more adventurous, then use them as a noodle substitute in this ramen noodle recipe. Number two is aubergines or eggplants. Now these can be cooked in a variety of ways. I love them because they suck up the flavor from everything around them. My favorite way to cook them is to cut them into thin slices and use them as a substitute for lasagna sheets. Asparagus. This vegetable has such incredible flavor, especially if you can get it locally produced and in season. It makes a great low carb side dish, steamed, sauteed, barbecued. It makes a fantastic accompaniment for steak. Number four is broccoli. Now this might seem like a pretty boring vegetable, especially if it's just boiled or steamed, but there are loads of great ways you can cook broccoli that make it loads more exciting. Stir fry it, roast it, or even blend it up into a soup. And number five is mushrooms. Love them or hate them, mushrooms are very low in carbs. I always try to keep some in the fridge. Garlic mushrooms are a great tasty side dish. Just saute them with some butter and some garlic. I mix mushrooms with some cheese as a stuffing for an omelette, or make a lovely creamy mushroom sauce to go with steak. Number six is peppers. Now, fun fact, red peppers are just ripe green peppers. They go through yellow on the way to get there. And the ripening process means that more sugars will be present in the flesh of peppers. Green peppers are a really solid, low carb choice at three net carbs, whereas red and yellow peppers only just make this list at five grams per 100 grams. You can slice them up and eat them raw in salads or fry them up as part of this awesome beef fajita dish. Number seven is the amazing avocado. Avocados are one of my low carb superfoods. They're just loaded with healthy fats and are perfect in salads, blended in smoothies for an extra creamy texture or squashed up to make guacamole. Is it guacamole or guacamole? Hmm, I don't know. If you've never tried making guacamole at home, it's really easy and it's so much better than the shop bought stuff. There's a recipe for it as part of the beef fajitas recipe that I mentioned earlier, so make sure you check that out. And all the recipes, by the way, are linked down below this video in the description. And before we go any further, I wanna talk about the elephant in the room. Not all of these vegetables are technically vegetables. I, yeah, it's true. Some of them are actually technically fruits, but we talk about them as vegetables because they have similar nutritional profiles to vegetables, even though they're not. 
but here's a little challenge for you. Let me know in the comments down below which of the items on this list is technically neither a vegetable nor a fruit. Be a fun guy and drop me a message in the comments below. Number eight is the humble tomato. Again, it's not a vegetable, but it is a fruit. Lots of people seem to get upset about tomatoes on low carb diets, and I'm not really sure why that is. Yeah, there are certain varieties which are a bit sweeter than others and may have a slightly higher carb count, but most are pretty low in carbs. And of course, there's hundreds of different ways that you can use tomatoes, such as raw in salads or cooked, but beware of sun-dried tomatoes. For the same reason that we avoid dried fruit, the sugars that are there are just so much more concentrated in anything that's been dried. Number nine is cabbages. Now, cabbages don't have to be boring, you know. Shredded cabbages can form the basis for coleslaw and work really well as a sort of noodle substitute for low carb stir fries. These could be seriously tasty. Number 10 is olives. Love them or hate them, they feature in quite a lot of our recipes over at carbdodging.com. But olives are often my go-to snack on the road because you can usually pick up a small pot in pretty much most supermarkets very easily. Number 11 is a group which is green leafy vegetables. And by green leafy vegetables, I mean things like spinach, spring greens, kale, those kind of things. I'm not gonna go into detail in this one because they're not exactly the most inspiring out of all of these vegetables, but they are super low in carbs and full of important nutrients. Whether you decide to cook them or blend them into smoothies, they're always something we can get more of in our diets. Number 12 is lettuce. And number 13 is cucumber. And I'm gonna talk about these two together, again, because they're not overly excited on their own, but they form the basis of amazing salads, which you can eat to your heart's content on a low carb diet. Number 14 is something that I think is frequently overlooked as a great low carb vegetable. It's radishes. And this includes the radishes oriental cousin, the Dakian radish or mooli. I always used to think of using radishes in salads and we've used them in this awesome salmon niçoise salad, but they can also be roasted and stir fried. Get creative with them. Number 15 is green beans, which we also used in the salmon niçoise salad. You can use them in salads, stir fries, or as a side dish. But they also work really well for meal prep foods because once cooked, they can be stored really well in the fridge for a few days. And last, but by very means not least, number 16 is the cauliflower. Oh, cauliflower, I can't believe I've left you until number 16. No, it's fine. It's fine. I may have saved the best to last. Cauliflower is quite possibly the king or queen of low-carb vegetables. It can be mashed as a potato substitute, blend it with parmesan and use it to top off this amazing shepherd's pie. Grate it, pulse it up in a blender, chop it up finely and use it as a low carb rice substitute. And I just love to chunk it up into florets or steaks and roast it in the oven with some salt, pepper and oil. It's such a quick, easy and tasty side dish. You can even make cauliflower into a pizza base. And if cauliflower can be a pizza base, then my friends, anything is possible. So that is the list of my top 16 low carb vegetables and hopefully a bit of inspiration about how to use those in various recipes. And all the recipes that I've mentioned are linked down below in the description below this video. Now, knowing which foods are lower carb options and which are higher carb options is half the battle when you're starting out on a low carb diet. So I've put together this downloadable cheat booklet, which tells you the low carb contents of most of the common foods you'll find in the supermarkets. There's a traffic light system to show you which foods are all good, which you need to be careful with the quantity and which you should avoid altogether in order to be successful on a low carb diet. You can download it, keep it on your computer or on your phone, or even print it out. And the link for that, again, is in the description below this video. That's it for today. I hope that's been helpful. I release new videos like this every Tuesday, so be sure to subscribe to my channel and click that bell to get notified. Remember to comment down below if you manage to spot which of these vegetables isn't actually a vegetable or a fruit at all. Or just hit the like button if you found this video useful. Have a great week and I'll see you next Tuesday.